Good morning, good morning. Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay so I will know that you are watching. Good morning, good morning. And if you're tuning in for the very first time, type a number one in the comments and you know what to do. Good morning, Carmen. As you're tuning in, go ahead and type in the comments. God did it again. It is a great day to be alive. Amen. Let me go ahead and get this um, shared over to my other page, my ministry page. Let's see if I can get it pulled up here. Great morning, everybody. Good morning. So good to see you all. Okay, here we go. Good morning. Good morning. Great morning, everybody. Good morning. Y'all type in the comments. God did it again. It is a great day to be alive. I'm so excited to see you all. Yes, ma'am. Y'all type in the comments. God, I appreciate you. God, I appreciate you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. If you are new and tuning in for the first time, um, so glad you're here. We are reading through the One Year Bible together. The publisher is Tyndale. As long as you get the Bible with the green leaves, you have the right Bible. There are so many different Bible um, reading plans. And after the broadcast, I will share the link, our link tree, and it will have the link to the actual One Year Bible, which I order off of Amazon. You can get it anywhere. And I will also uh, share the link to the Bible reading plan. If you are not in the We Write the Word One Year Bible community, you'll want to join us in there. That is where I share the daily prayer points um, for the day, as well as the, the daily the verse that we meditate on for the day. Um, and what's today? February 26th, which means by this weekend, right? <laughs> if I have my days right, by this weekend, I will have the new scripture writing plan and the one year Bible reading plan posted for March. So if you go to the search box after this broadcast and type in we write the word or my name or something, the group will come up. Um, so yeah, join us in there if you're not in there. I love, I didn't approve those posts. I totally um, have quite a few posts to go approve. Um, I love seeing the ladies, um, just their journals and the scripture writing and just, I love everything that you all share in there. Just really such a blessed group and y'all bless me so much. All right. So, um, go ahead and begin to share out the broadcast. Great morning, Terry. Um, we missed you last night, Terry. Um, go ahead and begin to share out the broadcast after you've shared, type in hashtag shared and I think that's it. Make sure that you have grabbed your anointing oil and that you have anointed your hands. Look at these oily hands. Always oily and shiny, right? <laughs> oily. Uh, go ahead and type in the comments. My hands are blessed. Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch prospers. Everything that I touch multiplies. Amen. Everything I touch turns to gold. Say everything. These blessed hands will lay hands on the sick. They will be healed and they will recover in Jesus name. How do we know? Because the Bible tells us so. Amen. Type in the comments. My hands are blessed. My hands are blessed. So good to see you all. All right. We are going to begin with a time of worship uh, before we head in to the word. And we have something a little different this morning. Uh, there was a song that the Lord put on my heart. Um, so what I need you to do this morning is type in the comments, thank you for your mercy. Someone type that in for me. Thank you for your mercy. Is anybody else thankful that God's mercies are new every morning? Y'all type in, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Amen. All right. So let's go ahead and get good morning, Dolores. Good to see you. Good morning, Peggy. Uh, I saw a comment that I that I that went by me. I'll have to go back. Um, thank you so much, Joanne. Thank you for sharing. All right. So we're going to dive in um, to our song of worship this morning. And uh, then we will head into the word and just see what the Lord wants to do. Yes, I'll type that in. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Oh, hold on. I didn't. Um, I went to share it over to my ministry page, but I didn't. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me. Um, 
kind of want to forget about them over there. Hold on. Almost forgot. See, I've been doing good remembering to do that. Okay, here you go. All right, we are good now. Okay, I had to share it over to my other page. Um, so yes, thank you for your mercy. So, to, Father, we honor you. We bless you. Father, we thank you that you woke us up this morning. We thank you for allowing us to see another day. We thank you for another chance to come together and to for fellowship and to worship you and to listen to your word. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence. We say, come and have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, thank you for your grace and mercy. So we're going to go ahead into this time of worship. And as we are in worship, just go ahead and continue to fill the comments with your worship and today we're not asking for anything we are just thanking God all right so just fill the comments if, even if you just type in the comments um, God I appreciate you so that's what we're doing today all right Lord Jesus, we bring the nations of the earth before you. it's gonna be a little different this morning in your mercy we come by your blood we come by the blood of Jesus. Ordinarily, you should not listen to us. But because of the sacrifice of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, we can come and ask for your mercy. Say we thank you for your mercy. We join others in the world today and just ask for your mercy. We ask that you be merciful. Be merciful to us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy. Anybody else thankful for his us. mercy? We come by your blood. We have strayed. We have done the things you did not ask us to do. And even when we do, we try to justify these things. Lord, we stand in gap. This minute, this hour, this time. We stand in gap for ourselves, mm -hmm. for those close to us, for our cities. We stand in gap for our nations. I stand in gap for Nigeria, for Africa, for we Asia. Stand in the gap this morning. We stand in the gap for South America, for North America. We stand in the gap for Europe. We stand in the gap. For Australia, we stand in the gap Thank for Antarctica, for your mercy. we stand in the gap, and we just pray, Lord Jesus, look upon us with your mercy. We have made errors, we have done things you didn't ask us to do, mm. and we still try to justify it, but we just ask that you be merciful mm. to us. Don't treat us the way we deserve. If you are to treat us the way we deserve, no one will stand. Not one of us None will of be us able to stand. stand. Hallelujah. If you are to give us the measure of the things we do, the measure of judgment that we need to get, if you are to met it to us, Lord, no one will stand. Nobody will stand. None of us will remain. And that's why we seek and ask for your mercy. We ask for your mercy, Lord Jesus. We ask for your mercy, precious Lord Jesus. Have mercy upon us. God, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon the nations of the earth. Have mercy upon the leaders of the nations of the earth. Say, have mercy. Have mercy, Lord Jesus, upon us. Have mercy upon each citizen of this earth. Have mercy. Have mercy. Be merciful unto us. We don't deserve your mercy. Mm. We are stubborn. We don't listen. But Lord Jesus, do not treat us the way we deserve. Mm. Do not treat oh, us yeah. the way we deserve. Do not treat us the way we deserve. Look upon us with your mercy, Lord. Look upon us with your mercy, Lord. Hallelujah. Look upon us with your mercy, Lord. Don't treat us the way we deserve. Don't treat us the way we deserve. Don't treat us the way we deserve. Have mercy upon us. So have mercy have on us, Have mercy Lord. upon us. We come by your mercy, Lord Jesus. Have mercy. That's all we ask for. That's all we ask for. Mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. To retrace our steps. Mercy, 
Lord. Mercy, Lord, to start to do what you want us to do. Mercy, Lord, to start to walk in line with your will. You Mercy, walk Lord, in line to start with to your walk will, in line Lord. with your will and your way, Lord Jesus. Have mercy upon us. We are strayed so far. Bring us back. Bring us back. Bring us back. We are straight so far. Bring, bring us me back, back, Lord Jesus. Bring us back to you. Bring our hearts back to you. We have shared our hearts with so many things. Hallelujah. We have shared our hearts with so many things, Lord. We bring our hearts back to you. Ooh, we yes. surrender Hallelujah. our hearts back to you. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, Lord Jesus. We need your mercy. Say, I need, need your, your mercy. mercy. Bring us back to you. Bring us back to you. Bring us back to you. Say, bring forgive us, us for sharing our heart with other things. We bring our hearts back to you. Yes, of the mercy. of his mercy. Oh Lord, we need your mercy. Hallelujah. It's not our him that we let all that wrong but God who shows mercy. He is the God who shows and mercy. Say, forgive me, Lord. It is of the mercies of the Lord. Hallelujah. That we are not We thank you for your mercy. Oh, Lord. We need your mercy. We need your mercy, Lord. Who shows and mercy? That's why we ask right now. Have mercy. Say, have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy on, on us, Lord. Mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy, have mercy, Lord, on us. Have mercy, have mercy, Lord. Anybody else thankful for his mercy? Type in, I need your mercy. for God's mercy for not giving me what I deserve. See you on this 
we thank you for not giving us what we deserve. Hallelujah. We thank you for your mercy. Hallelujah. Have mercy on us, Lord. And we need your mercy, Lord. Yes, Lord, bring our hearts back to you this morning. else thankful for his mercy today. His mercy said no. His mercy said no. Hallelujah. Anybody else thankful this morning? Lord, we ask for your mercy. Let your mercy say no Hallelujah. to the judgment we deserve. His mercy said no. We know, Jesus, you keep advocating for us before the Father. We ask again over the nations of the earth. our foolishness. <laughs> Bring us back from where we are strayed. Hallelujah. If you judge us, you will be just. If you judge us, you will be true. So we are not coming to make excuses. We just ask for your mercy. Upon the continents of the earth. Hallelujah. And we ask for your mercy. 
mercy upon your church. Generous and love God. Generous and love God. Your love is boundless. Your love is limitless. Your love is generous. Your love is generous. Your love is generous. Mm. Amen. All Your right. Love is generous. So that's it this morning. Your love is generous. Amen. All right. Hold the line. Say thank you for your mercy. I was listening to that this morning and the Lord wanted me to share that. When we really sit and think about what we deserve and when we really think about how his mercy said no, can't help but to be thankful. So I pray that that blessed somebody this morning and that you really open your eyes <laughs> to what, the, what Jesus did, you know. All right, y'all. So that's it this morning. Whew. Type in, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. I think that's one of those things we just say, you know. His grace and mercy is new every morning. But we're not really thinking about it. We're not really thinking about what we're saying. Let that not just be one of the cool things that we say. I thank him for his mercy. All right. So. I am going to pull the one year because y'all listen, I have done some foolish things and I know I'm not alone in saying that. So when I say I am thankful for his mercy. All right. I hope that did that bless y'all. Did that bless y'all? I know that was a little different this morning. So let's go ahead and um and uh let me get myself together. Hold on. Let me um what am I trying to say? I'm going to pull the one-year Bible up. So go ahead and grab y'all's Bibles, grab your water, grab your journals. Just go ahead and grab everything that you need and let me get this pulled up on my phone. Uh, how many of us have uh, allowed our hearts to go after other things? So we say this morning, forgive us, Lord. We bring our hearts back to you. We thank you for your mercy. February 26th. All right. All right. To get myself together. All right, here we go. Did that bless y'all? <laughs> Type a number two in the comments at the volume. The book of Leviticus, chapter it's okay. 19, verse one, and we'll go through chapter twenty, verse twenty-one. And here's what's going on there. This is from. Warren Wiersbe's chapter by it. chapter Bible commentary where he says God's command for his people to be holy applies to us today. The declaration, I am the Lord, found 15 times in this chapter, reminds us that he must control every area of life. The home. Holiness should start in the home as we show respect for our parents. Time. All of our time belongs to God. And we must not waste it. But we must also take care to devote special times to him in worship and service. And then business, making dishonest deals, telling lies, holding back money, and using God's name to cover frauds are all out of the question when he is really Lord. Out of the and question. And there's neighbors, unkindness, injustice, gossip, grudges, and hatred are evil. There's just no other word for it. They're evil. Love your neighbor as yourself is, in fact, the second greatest commandment. And now let's begin our reading today here in the Old Testament. February 26th, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 1, through chapter 20, verse 21. The Lord also said to Moses, say this to the entire community of Israel. You must be holy because I the Lord your God am holy. Each of you must show respect for your mother and father, and you must always observe my Sabbath days of rest, for I, the Lord, am your God. Do not put your trust in idols or make gods of metal for yourselves. I, the Lord, 
and your God. When you sacrifice a peace offering to the Lord, offer it properly so it will be accepted on your behalf. You must eat it on the same day you offer it or on the next day at the latest. Any leftovers that remain until the third day must be burned. If any of the offering is eaten on the third day, it will be contaminated, and I will not accept it. If you eat it on the third day, you will answer for the sin of profaning what is holy to the Lord and must be cut off from the community. When you harvest your crops, do not harvest the grain along the edges of your fields and do not pick up what the harvesters drop. It is the same with your grape crop. Do not strip every last bunch of grapes from the vines. And do not pick up the grapes that fall to the ground. Leave them for the poor and the foreigners who live among you. For I, the Lord, am your God. Do not steal. Do not cheat one another. Do not lie. Do not use my name to swear a falsehood. And so profane the name of your God, I am the Lord. Do not cheat or rob anyone. Always pay your hired workers promptly. Show your fear of God by treating the deaf with respect and by not taking advantage of the blind. I am the Lord. Always judge your neighbors fairly, neither favoring the poor nor showing deference to the rich. Do not spread slanderous gossip among your people. Do not try to get ahead at the cost of your neighbor's life, for I am the Lord. Do not nurse hatred in your heart for any of your relatives. Confront your neighbors directly, so you will not be held guilty for their crimes. Never seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone. But love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. You must obey all my laws. Do not breed your cattle with other kinds of animals. Do not plant your field with two kinds of seed. Do not wear clothing woven from two different kinds of fabric. If a man has sexual intercourse with a slave girl who is committed to become someone else's wife, compensation must be paid. But since she had not been freed at the time, the couple will not be put to death. The man, however, must bring a ram as a guilt offering and present it to the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle. The priest will then make atonement for him before the Lord with the sacrificial ram of the guilt offering, and the man will be forgiven. When you enter the land and plant fruit trees, leave the fruit unharvested for the first three years and consider it forbidden. In the fourth year, the entire crop will be devoted to the Lord as an outburst of praise. Finally, in the fifth year, you may eat the fruit. In this way, its yield will be increased. I, the Lord, am your God. Never eat meat that has not been drained of its blood. Do not practice fortune-telling <coughs> or witchcraft. Do not trim off the hair on your temples or clip the edges of your beards. Never cut your bodies in mourning for the dead or mark your skin with tattoos, for I am the Lord. Do not defile your daughter by making her a prostitute or the land will be filled with promiscuity and detestable wickedness. Keep my Sabbath days of rest and show reverence toward my sanctuary. For I am the Lord. Do not rely on mediums and psychics, for you will be defiled by them. Mm -hmm. I, the Lord, am your God. Show your fear of God by standing up in the presence of elderly people and showing respect for the aged. Thank you. I am the Lord. Do not exploit the foreigners who live in your land. They should be treated like everyone else. And you must love them as you love yourself. Remember that you were once foreigners in the land of Egypt. I, the Lord, am your God. Do not use dishonest standards when measuring length, weight, or volume. Your scales and weights must be accurate. 
Your containers for measuring dry goods or liquids must be accurate. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You must be careful to obey all my laws and regulations, for I am the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, Give the Israelites these instructions, which apply to those who are Israelites by birth, as well as to the foreigners living among you. If any among them devote their children as burnt offerings to Molech, they must be stoned to death by people of the community. I myself will turn against them and cut them off from the community, because they have defiled my sanctuary and profaned my holy name by giving their children to Molech. And if the people of the community ignore this offering of children to Molech and refuse to execute the guilty parents, then I myself will turn against them and cut them off from the community, along with all those who commit prostitution by worshiping Molech. If any among the people are unfaithful by consulting and following mediums or psychics, I will turn against them and cut them off from the community. So set yourselves apart to be holy, for I, the Lord, am your God. Keep all my laws and obey them, for I am the Lord who makes you holy. All who curse their father or mother must be put to death. They are guilty of a capital offense. If a man commits adultery with another man's wife, both the man and the woman mm -hmm. must be put to death. If a man has intercourse with his father's wife, both the man and the woman must die, for they are guilty of a capital offense. If a man has intercourse with his daughter-in-law, both must be put to death. They have acted contrary to nature and are guilty of a capital offense. The penalty for homosexual acts is death to both parties. They have committed a detestable act and are guilty of a capital offense. If a man has intercourse with both a woman and her mother, such an act is terribly wicked. All three of them must be burned to death to wipe out such wickedness from among you. If a man has sexual intercourse with an animal, he must be put to death, and the animal must be killed. If a woman approaches a male animal to have intercourse with it, she and the animal must both be put to death. Both must die. They are guilty of a capital offense. If a man has sexual intercourse with his sister, the daughter of either his father or his mother, it is a terrible disgrace. Both of them must be publicly cut off from the community. Since the man has had intercourse with his sister, he will suffer the consequences of his guilt. If a man has intercourse with a woman suffering from a hemorrhage, both of them must be cut off from the community because he exposed the source of her flow and she allowed him to do it. If a man has sexual intercourse with his aunt, whether his mother's sister or his father's sister, he has violated a close relative. Both parties are guilty of a capital offense. If a man has intercourse with his uncle's wife, he has violated his uncle. Both the man and woman involved are guilty of a capital offense and will die childless. If a man marries his brother's wife, it is an act of impurity. He has violated his brother and the guilty couple will remain childless. Somebody type in the comments, thank you God for Jesus. February 26th. And now, as we turn our attention to the reading Go of the New Testament, you our narrative yet. today will be from the book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 11 through 38. We'll read about defective understanding. The disciples did not perceive what he meant by the leaven. The blindness of the Pharisees does not surprise us. But why were his followers so blind? Like Israel of old, the disciples saw his acts, but did not understand his ways. Ask God to give you spiritual insight. We'll read about defective devotion. One minute Peter is inspired from heaven, and the next minute 
His tongue is ignited from hell. Peter saw only shame in the cross, but Jesus saw glory. Peter saw defeat, but Jesus saw great victory. Never be afraid or ashamed to be his disciple and bear your cross, for Jesus bore it first. And now, let's read our scripture today here in the New Testament. February 26th, Mark chapter 8, verses 11 through 38. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had arrived, they came to argue with him, testing him to see if he was from God. They demanded, give us a miraculous sign from heaven to prove yourself. When he heard this, he sighed deeply and said, why do you people keep demanding a miraculous sign? I assure you, I will not give this generation any such sign. So he got back into the boat and left them, and he crossed to the other side of the lake. But the disciples discovered they had forgotten to bring any food, so there was only one loaf of bread with them in the boat. As they were crossing the lake, Jesus warned them, Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and of Herod. They decided he was saying this because they hadn't brought any bread. Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he said, Why are you so worried about having no food? Won't you ever learn or understand? Are your hearts too hard to take it in? You have eyes, can't you see? You have ears, can't you hear? Don't you remember anything at all? What about the 5,000 men I fed with five loaves of bread? How many baskets of leftovers did you pick up afterward? Twelve, they said. And when I fed the 4,000 with seven loaves, how many large baskets of leftovers did you pick up? Seven. Seven, they said. Don't you understand even yet? He asked them. When they arrived at Bethsaida, Gotta the people Jesus. brought a blind man to Jesus. And they begged him to touch and heal the man. Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Then, spitting on the man's eyes, he laid his hands on him and asked, Can you see anything now? The man looked around. Yes, he said. I see people, but I can't see them very clearly. They look like trees walking around. Then Jesus placed his hands over the man's eyes again. As the man stared intently, his sight was completely restored. Come on now. And he could see everything clearly. Jesus sent him home, saying, Don't go back into the village on your way home. Jesus and his disciples left Galilee and went up to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. As they were walking along, he asked them, I was once Who do blind, people say I am? now I see. Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say, you are one of the other prophets. Then Jesus asked, Who do you say I am? Peter replied, You are the Messiah. But Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. Then Jesus began to tell them that he, the Son of Man, would suffer many terrible things and be rejected by the leaders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious yes. law. He would be killed, and three days later he would rise again. As he talked about this openly with his disciples, Peter took him aside and told him he shouldn't say things like that. Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, and then said to Peter very sternly, Get away from me, Satan. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Then he called his disciples and the crowds to come over and listen. If any of you wants to be my follower, he told them, you must put aside your selfish ambition, shoulder your cross, and follow me. If you try to keep your life for yourself, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will find true life. And how do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul in the process? Yes. Is anything worth more than your soul? If a person is ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, I, the Son of Man, 
will be ashamed of that person when I return in the glory of my father with the holy angels. Somebody said, I once was blind, but now I see. Psalm 42, 1 through 11. Mm, we'll see you. that the refrain, Why are you cast down, O my soul? Ties these two psalms together. Why was the writer so depressed? Over one thing, God seemed far from him in his hour of need. He felt like a thirsty deer in the desert, searching for water. But the truth is, the Lord is never far away. He is near even when you don't recognize him. The writer's depression was aggravated because he looked back at the so-called good old days. We can have very uh, selective and even faulty memories when it comes to what we perceive as the good old days. Be careful of that. <coughs> he longed to return to Jerusalem and minister in the temple. The writer of the song. Am Sometimes I retirement or a change of residence will make people depressed. The older we get, the less we enjoy change. Psalm 42, verses 1 through 11. For the choir director, a psalm of the descendants of Korah. Okay. As the deer pants for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. When can I come and stand before him? Day and night, I have only tears for food. While my enemies continually taunt me, saying, Where is this God of yours? My heart is breaking, as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks. It was the sound of a great celebration. Why am I discouraged? Why so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember your kindness. From Mount Hermon, the source of the Jordan, from the land of Mount Mizar, I hear the tumult of the raging seas, as your waves and surging tides sweep over me. Through each day, the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me, and through each night, I sing his songs, praying to God, who gives me life. Oh, God, my rock, I cry. Why have you forsaken me? Why must I wander in darkness, oppressed by my enemies? Their taunts pierce me like a fatal wound. They scoff. Where is this God of yours? Why am I discouraged? Why so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 17. People who accept correction are on the pathway to life, but those who ignore it will lead others astray. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, and let everybody say, Amen. All right, so this was good. So, if you are new to the broadcast and you made it this far, we are so glad you are here. Uh, we are basically just listening to the one-year Bible together, or you can follow along in your actual one-year Bible. And so usually after the broadcast, the Lord will kind of put something on my heart to share, and he didn't give me anything uh, specifically for you all to share to share with you all but that's okay because we uh talked about so much over the past couple of days um so what was it how um satan always wants to kind of attack us in the area of our mind and then yesterday we talked about um him wanting to um to uh, attack us in the area of our body if he can't you know attack us in our mind and so um in Psalm this morning, well, we just read, it is storming so bad out here. Um, 
in verse 5, uh, David said, Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again. And then said the same thing right down in verse 11. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. And then um, going back up to verse 6, Now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember your kindness. And so... Um, I, Latrice, you might have to go out and come back in. I saw people saying that um, that um, that I wasn't frozen, so I'm just gonna assume that I'm not frozen because I see comments moving, um, and so that that spoke to me because you know uh, that's one of the another trick of the enemy, another tactic or another scheme of the enemy where he will come and try to cause the people of God to be discouraged, and a couple of more D's. So I put discouragement. Um, he wants us to be con discontent. And he wants to fill us with doubt. So those are the three, discouragement, discontent, and doubt, at least for me. Um, those are the, the ways that he tries to come. And so what I loved is what David did. He's like, why am I so discouraged? My heart is so sad. I will put my trust in the Lord. So that's our declaration for today. I declare that I will put my hope in God. He said, I will put my hope in God. Y'all type that in the comments. I declare that I will put my hope in God. So when those time comes, at times come and the enemy tries to send discouragement. And if I can be honest, it's for me on a daily basis. I constantly have to tell myself, <laughs> you know, talk to myself because the enemy is constantly trying, whether it's through a person's post where, you know, People will post messages where you know they're kind of sort of talking about you because you might have just got off the phone with them or something, you know, or he tries to discourage me through people and their not so nice messages on Facebook, you know, just always kind of trying to discourage me and to, oh, let's add this one, distract, distraction, another D. All right, so that's, uh, I thought I didn't have anything, but I guess he gave me something just now. So that's discouragement. Y'all type that in discouragement, um, discontentment, doubt, and distractions. All right, those are the four Ds, all right, for me, for me. And so I love where he's, you, we have to speak to our soul, like speak to ourselves sometimes. I feel, you know, discouragement, but this is what I will do. And so we have to constantly encourage ourselves every time, well, I'm talking for myself, every single day. All right, so yeah, that's our declaration. I declare that I will put my hope in God. So he wants us to be distracted, right? And a lot of times we don't know we're distracted until after we're distracted. And you're like, wait a minute, that was a distraction. You know, so he tries to send distractions. He tries to send discouragement, doubt, discontentment, um, all of that. And so um, it is time for us to pay attention, right? And just to be aware of his schemes. Um, because listen, what is it? First Peter 5, 8 said where, um, I have my note from yesterday. Um, be alert and sober of mind. Your enemy, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking for someone. And what do we say? Who's someone? Y'all type in the comments, not me. Looking for someone to devour. Go ahead and say, but it won't be me because I am aware, I am alert, I am sober. You know, just like he spends time studying us, I believe, this is me, my opinion, we need to spend some time studying him. Uh, because if we listen to people, you don't need to waste your time on the enemy, talking about the enemy, thinking about what the enemy's doing. You may not, but I do. Just because we are in a war, right? And just like our enemy spends time studying us, we need to spend the same amount of time, if not more, studying him, right? And so that's just what I believe. Um, so that's it. That's all I have today. I didn't really have anything to share. So, uh, right, who is someone? Not me. Tap your neighbor and ask, who's someone? <laughs> is it you? Because it's not me. Tap your other neighbor. Is it you? Because it's not me. <laughs> It's not me or not in proper English, but it just sounds better. It ain't me. <laughs> it ain't me. And so if you did not get that book, what's the name of the book? I can't remember. I, I shared it the other day um, by Warren Wearsby. Uh, what's the title? Someone knows it um, or I'll post it in the comments. Um, I think I shared it either yesterday or the day before yesterday. Oh, hold on. I wrote it down. Um, 
it was uh, The Strategy of Satan by Warren Wearsby, W-I-E-R-S-B-E, The Strategy of Satan. And so we need to know. We need to know. So get that book. Spend some time studying him. You know, uh, don't just speed read through it. Take your time. I've been in it for quite some time. Just taking my time. So just as he studies us, he knows us. He watches us. He studies us. He knows how to get to us. He knows what buttons to push. And we need to know him as well. Yes, discouragement, doubt, discontentment, and distraction. All right, so that's it. Go ahead and begin to share your takeaways in the comments. Um, yes, definitely, definitely, Tanya. Um, go ahead and share your takeaways. What's something that stood out to you? Something you will do differently because of what you heard today? My prayer is that you, what you can do differently when you get discouraged. Just remind yourself, talk to yourself, and tell yourself, I will put my hope in the Lord. I will put my hope in the Lord. All right, y'all. So that's all I have. I pray that this has blessed you. I pray that the song of worship blessed you, just reminding us all of God's goodness and his mercy, his kindness towards us. And uh, because if he were to give us what we deserve, we wouldn't eat or I, if he were to give me what I deserve, I wouldn't be able to stand. So I have to talk for myself um, because there might be someone on here that's pretty perfect. And doesn't deserve anything but mm -hmm. I am aware I am sober I am alert amen I will put my hope in the Lord keep a positive mindset hey Debbie so good to see you Lorraine don't give up I will put my hope in the Lord amen I declare that I will put my hope in the Lord hi Patricia it's so good that sometimes I don't know who's on until I see y'all comment <laughs> good morning <laughs> good morning good morning Mm -hmm. enemies constantly throwing distractions and we need to be aware we need to be sober we need to be alert we need to be aware we need to be aware of his strategies so um, I know I'm recommending a whole lot of books for y'all but I hope you all get them and um, sometimes for me I may be reading a, a few different books at a time like I may read a certain chapter or two in a book on Monday too so I'm usually reading a few books at a time um, so I know y'all may be thinking, how do you read all those books? And I and I read through them kind of slowly um, because I I look at the the strategy of Satan. Um, I don't. It's not just a book for me, you know. Uh, that that's kind of like a what's the maybe playbook is not the word that I'm looking for. Or maybe it is because it, it yeah. I look at that book as a playbook, <laughs> right? So I'm reading through it. I'm like ah. I got you. I know what to do the next time this happens. Like, all right, I see you, devil. You know. So, listen, he spends his time studying us. We need to spend our time studying him. Yes, we need to know him. We need to know all of his name. Just know everything about him. Because, listen, I feel like he knows everything about us, right? I will not allow discouragement, discontentment, doubt, or distractions to keep me from putting my hope in God. Amen. All right, so it's Friday. Got to get my mind right. Got to get up and move this body. Hopefully, uh, some of the ladies will show up with me on Friday. <laughs> Fridays are kind of hard. Mondays are usually hard because after the weekends, we're kind of like, oh. And then on Fridays, you know, you're ready to kind of check out. <laughs> so on Mondays and Fridays are our hardest days <laughs> to show up. <laughs> I did not do good with my water this morning. Thank you for the reminder, Annie. I saw a hashtag, I will drink my water. And here's my water. <laughs> All right, so I think we're done. It looks like you all are done sharing your takeaways. Yes, no excuses. What are excuses? Excuses are nothing but nothing more than well-planned lies. Okay, I don't think I missed anything. All right, you all, I gotta go. And then I got my other nice comfy robe wrapped around me. And it's storming outside. I need to go get up, put on my workout clothes, <laughs> and act like I know I have to work out in 20 minutes. <laughs>
20 minutes. Hey Terry, are you um working out with us this morning? I can't remember what mornings you're with us and what mornings you're not. <laughs> Storming in Memphis. Okay, you are awesome. Good. <clears throat> I can't remember who else I saw on here. I think I saw V. All right, I'm going to go. I will see you all on Monday. The week went by so fast. It went by so fast. Did I forget anything? I don't think so. All right, bye, y'all. See y'all on Monday.